mosquito decided to bite me on my eyelid yesterday night. So uh, I don't need red eyeshadow. I just have this mosquito bite. Hi guys, welcome to another reading vlog. This is the Reading Rush Readathon reading vlog. So let me just start out by saying what I'm reading this Reading Rush. I know that technically you're supposed to, you know, start a book during the Reading Rush and then finish it within the Reading Rush, but I'm currently reading <laughs> three books that I haven't finished yet. And my goal for this Reading Rush is to just finish those books. So the first thing that I want to read is the audiobook that I'm currently listening to. It is This Changes Everything by Naomi Klein. When I started this morning, I still had nine hours left. <laughs> and the thing with non-fiction audiobooks like this is that I'm having a hard time reading them or listening to them for a long time. So usually I'll listen to like half an hour. So I'm really gonna have to push myself to listen to at least an hour a day of this audiobook during this entire week because that's the only way I'm gonna get through those nine hours in seven days. So that's definitely gonna be the biggest challenge of this reading rush. And then the one that I'm the most excited about <laughs> is The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. This is the sequel to the fifth season, which is a book that I recently read that I really liked. Uh, so I, <laughs> I just bought the entire series and I wanna get through that as quickly as possible. And if I somehow manage to finish this, this reading rush and still have a few days left, I'm gonna start the third book, which is The Stone Sky. I always choose the tab colors that I use based on the cover. So like the pink matches the purple on the cover. I don't know if I'm the only one that does that, but I like doing that. So those are the books that I'm gonna try to be reading these next seven days. Maybe there are other books that will cross my path when I finish some of these and I'll just take you along on the journey. So let's begin. So <laughs> it is now half past five and I finally am done with everything I need to do. So I now have some time to read. I did while I was cleaning and a lot of like cleaning up to do. I listened to the audiobook, which was a great way because I'm pretty sure that I now have only six hours left. So it means that I listened to almost two hours of audiobook. So I actually made a pretty big dent in This Changes Everything, which is really nice. And for now I was working on some new Etsy things, but I wanted to add some more bookmarks with some new designs. Uh, so I finished that and I ordered them. Um, so I hopefully this week they'll arrive and then I can show them to you. And I also have some other products that I'm really excited about, but I haven't quite figured out <laughs> where to order them. <laughs> so hopefully later in this vlog, I can show you all the new things that are gonna come to my Etsy store. But now I'm free and I can sit on the balcony and read because I'm pretty sure it's Pretty nice weather so I can sit in the sun. Yay! Right, and of course, right when I go to the balcony, I find out that it's actually quite cold here. There's a lot of wind, but I have my little poncho, so I'm gonna be warm. <laughs>
Oh, it's another day, day two of the reading rush. And I just wanted to show you these really cool earrings that my housemate made for me. She makes her own earrings. They're always super cool. And she made these book earrings for me. Oh, so cool. Okay, just gotta zoom in a little bit. This one's for Six of Crows. And the other one is Vicious. <gasps> so cool. <laughs> yeah, I just think it looks really cool and nerdy. So I'm going with it. Anyway, reading updates. I am now halfway into the Obelisk Gates. Oh, I'm definitely over halfway. Yeah, I already read around 50 pages today and I have 150 pages left. So I think I can finish that tomorrow. In case you somehow missed it, I just recently finished the fifth season and I really liked it. I even lent it out to my housemate immediately because I couldn't stop raving about it. It's like this post-apocalyptic fantasy series that kind of feels like science fiction and it's very mysterious and slow building which is not something that I thought I would like but I actually ended up really enjoying that. And this is book two. I'm definitely enjoying this but I will say the thing that I don't like about this book is that it took the thing that was so good about book one and then stopped doing it. The great thing about the fifth season is that nothing is explained to you. You're just given all the information in tiny little pieces and then you as a reader just slowly piece it all together. There's no info dumping at all and I thought that was so masterfully done. And then in the Obelisk Gates there's like an entire chapter of just info dump of just this one character explaining everything <laughs> to the main character and I was like why? Why would you do that? The last time I read an info dump chapter like this was in City of Bones <laughs> and here it is in the sequel to the fifth season and it just disappointed me because I know N.K. Jemison is capable of not doing that so it's a little sad. So I'm just really excited to finish this so I can finally wrap up my thoughts and I'm really excited to see what my overall thoughts of this book are gonna be. Whether it's gonna be leaning towards oh this has second book syndrome or whether I'm really gonna like it. Because now, so far, it could really go both ways. But the thing is, I need an excuse to listen to my audiobook because I don't know about you guys, but I rarely just sit down and listen to an audiobook, especially if it's non-fiction. Like I need to do something else while I'm listening to the audiobook. So I kind of want to go thrift shopping, basically just so I can walk to the thrift store and then <laughs> while walking there I can listen to my audiobook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the thrift store to just kind of browse around, maybe see if I can find some cool vintage inspired items. <laughs> Let me talk to you about the things that I bought. <laughs> so I went to the thrift store and I bought two little things. I think I managed to listen to another half hour of This Changes Everything by Naomi Klein, which is a book kind of about climate change. I'm not really gonna go into it too much in this vlog because in my last video I asked you guys if you were interested if I made a video dedicated to all the climate change books that I'm reading. So I'm gonna make a dedicated video where I will have the time to really go into it. But I do think it's kind of topical that I'm now getting some stuff from the thrift store because of course that's more environmentally conscious than buying things new. And I'm trying to, especially for clothes, I'm really trying to get some more things secondhand since fast fashion contributes so much to climate change. And I found this really cute blouse that is really my thing, my style. Super cute pattern. It looks very kind of retro if I wear it with like a a big pair of pants, you know, not skinny jeans. I'll show you what it looks like after I wash it. I'm gonna put it in the wash, in the hand wash. And then the other thing that I bought, a little unboxing, <laughs> it's a super cute little teacup to put a little plant in. I think that's super cute. It has a picture of Muiderslot, which is a famous castle in the Netherlands. And I thought the green details would just go quite well with my room. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little plant in this. Uh, I now have time again to continue reading in the Obelisk Gate. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> my constant thoughts while reading this trilogy is just 
constantly, what the heck? What the heck? What the heck is going on? What the heck does this mean? What the heck? The next morning I got dressed for my online meeting and then immediately turned back into a potato because I realized I wasn't feeling so good so I went back to bed so I wouldn't actually get sick. I read a little bit more in the obelisk gate, it made me cry. <sighs> And now we're here. <laughs> this is the shirt, by the way, that I bought two days ago. I think it's really cute. Yay. <laughs> this morning I actually finished The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. Now books don't usually make me cry. That rarely ever happens. But I just noticed that I was so attached to these characters that there are certain things that happen in this book that just actually legitimately made me really emotional so that's a very good sign but i'm just not sure where i stand on this book yet because on the one hand it has these things that are really good like for example the fact that it actually made me cry the fifth season did not make me cry i thought this book was thematically really strong i think it's always really difficult to find the themes in a book idea i think it might just be personal for what you get out of the story but i personally feel like at least one of the things that was explored in this book was of what happens if you're only taught one thing what happens if you only learn to use your talents in one way and how difficult it is to see what's not there how difficult it is to see the opportunities that you are not shown. That sounds super vague, because it is. <laughs> Talking about a book without saying spoilers makes it sound super, super vague. Okay, so here's the thing. One thing that I notice sometimes in books, it often happens in like second books in series, it's when it's kind of clear that the author thought to themselves, okay, hmm, we're reaching the end of the story. I need to introduce some kind of conflict that will make an end battle happen. So they just kind of make up a conflict to create a cool climax, end battle, but then that conflict doesn't actually feel like it fits in with the overall storyline. That's what I feel happened in the Obelisk Gate. The ending, it was really cool, but I do kind of feel like, what was the point of that? And after reading this book, I do kind of feel like, did we achieve anything? <laughs> did we actually move forward? Like we learned a lot. There's character development, we learned a lot, we learned a lot, we learned a lot of new things. But plot-wise, I feel like we still are not one step closer to the thing that we were trying to do in the first book. But yeah, I'm definitely just gonna immediately hop into the Stone Sky now. I don't know if I could finish this book with only three and a half days left, but we'll see where that goes. So I didn't really read that much yesterday. What I did do a lot was watch a TV show. I started re-watching my favorite TV show and I just want to talk about it because I don't think I've ever mentioned my favorite TV show here on this channel, but that is Hannibal. <laughs> this was like one of those series that I didn't know anyone who watched the series, but recently it was put on US Netflix. So it's gaining a little bit more popularity now. I literally got a VPN so I could watch it on the US Netflix, so I could finally rewatch it. And it makes me so happy because I never actually finished the series because I know that it's gonna have an open ending because it was discontinued. And for some reason, I'd rather not finish the series than finish it and have to sit with that open ending. Flawed logic, but I did it anyway. And I just want to say here to any one of you guys who've always wanted a story where the main character basically gets pulled down by the dark side and actually just joins the villain and slowly becomes bad. Hannibal, watch it. I mean, honestly, just the premise is already so... Good. It's about a detective, Will, and he has this really great psychological way of finding out who the killers are. But he is given a psychiatrist to help him with the cases and to make sure that he is stable and sane. But that psychiatrist is Hannibal, and our detective doesn't know that Hannibal is actually one of the killers of some of the murders that he's investigating. And it's so good, and there's just oh, the villain main character dynamic of that series is the best. Also, I do have to warn, it's a pretty gory, violence TV show, but I like that. So that was just me taking this little moment to rant about my favorite TV show. Now we can continue on with my day and I will start reading. Wow, I made a cup of tea so I could sit here 
with my cup of tea, having a little chat, but now I already said everything that I wanted to say and I didn't drink my tea. Anyway, let's read. I feel like this vlog is the most, just the messiest vlog that I've ever made. I'm very sorry for the energy that we've created in this room, but it is what it is. Also, I just want to show you that I got a really exciting package because at the beginning of this vlog I said that I ordered my new bookmarks and they just came in the mail, these huge hacking stacks of bookmarks. This is what they look like. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think I like these even more maybe than the other ones that I made. Like they both have a book and a key and I just feel like there's a story in there somewhere. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, I don't know when exactly I'm gonna add these to my Etsy store because I'm still waiting on some other products and then I'll just add them all in one big update. But if you wanna have updates on when that's going live, definitely follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at the book Leo, because that's where I usually post those updates. Um, and link to my Etsy store is always in the description. I'm really, really happy that so many of you guys wanna buy the things that I make and put out into the world. <laughs> No matter where you find yourself, no matter what kind of stuff is going on in your life, underneath it all, everything's actually all right. You're okay. You have more power than you might be giving yourself credit for. And if you have something that's going on in your life right now that's challenging, side with just my jogging pants on which is something that I would never do but I think with the rolled up pant legs and the docks it actually looks pretty cool you would almost not notice that they're jogging pants so that's my life hack for today <laughs> imagine a world in which I actually read something the past few days <laughs> okay I'm just kidding I'm just being a little bit dramatic today's Monday I didn't vlog Saturday and Sunday because I honestly just really didn't do anything vloggable that day and I didn't really read anything. I didn't actually end up finishing This Changes Everything by Naomi Klein. I have like maybe two hours left so I did make like a really big dent in it, like more than I would usually for audiobooks so that makes me very happy and hey the great thing about readathons is that their deadlines are completely arbitrary so you can just continue finishing the books on a later day. Mind-blowing, I know. <laughs> I'm only 50 pages into The Stone Sky, but don't worry, I'll just be finishing these books the next week and then I can talk to you about them in my July wrap-up. This was kind of a weird vlog because it was a weekly vlog, but I also didn't vlog that much and it was also supposed to be a reading rush vlog. But also, I didn't really rush you know, in my reading that much. But I do think it's a good idea to just mention here that the reading rush, like the organization of the reading rush and the hosts, have kind of been under scrutiny the past few days, especially reaching its high point today or yesterday. I found out about it today, I think. Uh, mm, time. Time. I don't, I don't know her. I don't know exactly every little thing that happened and that was going on. If you're on Twitter, you'll probably have noticed, but just in case any of you don't know, I think it's good for you to kind of know what's up. But basically, the host of the Reading Rush had a group book. I didn't know about the group book. A lot of people didn't know there was a group book because it was barely advertised. <laughs> From what I've heard, the book that was chosen was partially about how black women are often used for performative allyship and it was going to be very educational. But today it turned out that the hosts actually didn't end up reading that book. They kind of gave up so they also couldn't have the discussion live show of that book today. Which is ironic to say the least. So that's a little bit disappointing. It's just sad because books by and about people of color, especially women of color, already have a harder time getting hyped up and becoming more popular. So to see this lack of motivation from the hosts is just kind of disappointing. 
There are a lot of videos on YouTube of actual people of color recommending really great books by and about people of color, but I'll try to find some and link them in the description so you can check them out because obviously that's a good thing to do with your time. That being said, I still want to upload this vlog because I think it's just like any of my other vlogs where it's just I go through my week and I have fun and scream about my favorite pieces of fiction. What else do I need to say? Is there anything important that I want to mention before I end this vlog? I don't think so. Yeah. Anyway, I really hope you ended up enjoying this vlog and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye.